Powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. Now, live from inside the Matt Black Kia Studios, it's Football at Four. And Football at Four is powered by the Inside the Birds bro- uh, podcast, and it is brought to you by the Gallery Bar Book and Games at Ocean Casino Resort for the football season. Cheers your favorite drinks while cheering on your favorite teams. Go to the Gallery and Ocean Casino Resort. And go for the win. For more information, visit OceanAC.com. You must be 21 or older to play. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Adam Kaplan is in, I believe, Carolina uh, for the Panthers and the Patriots. They are having their joint practices there before he heads to Cleveland for Browns and Eagles. And he joins us right now for Football at Four here on the Sports Bash Live on 97.3 ESPN. Adam Kaplan, what's up, buddy? Yeah, good to tell you in Foxborough, Massachusetts. Oh, they're up there. My bad. Yeah, yeah, no problem. So, yeah, I just saw uh, practice ended about uh, two hours ago where the, uh, the Patriots are hosting the Panthers uh, for two days before the game on Friday night. And uh, it was actually a spirited practice. It was, of all these practices, Mike, uh, this is the first time I've seen fights this summer. And uh, actually, unfortunately, uh, as Matt Rule talked about, the uh, it's good to see Matt, uh, the former Temple head coach, is now the of course, the Panthers head coach, uh, they had a rule. Anyone who gets to the fight gets chucked. So uh, two Patriots receivers were thrown out. Kendrick Bourne is one of them. It was more or less one of their starting receivers. And uh, that was disappointing. Yeah, that was disappointing, but a lot of action today. Yeah, we know that uh, these joint practices, uh, many teams value these uh, more than they do these preseason games, right? And the Eagles are one of those teams, it seems like. Yeah, in fact, Mike, it's funny you say that because I was thinking that Maybe that they don't have to play um, you know, any starters uh, this week uh, because I'll be there Thursday and Friday in Berea, Ohio. And coaches will tell you um, a lot when they have these joint practices. If they go well, uh, more or less, they, if they think they got great work in, why would they give them even more work two days later, which is you know, more physical, and why expose them? So we'll see, but... It wouldn't surprise me because of this if the starters are held out, or most of them are. Well, we did see the Eagles play on uh, Friday night, obviously, and now they start to work on that roster. They made a trade yesterday, J.J. Ortega-Whiteside. <laughs> they made a couple of uh, roster moves over the weekend, uh, waving a couple of players. So we're starting to see them whittle their way to 85. And then, of course, uh, we can comment a little bit more on the, the end of the Ortega-Whiteside era. Uh, not a good one for him. <laughs> and the player that they got in return, Ugo Amadi. Yeah, Mike, it's really interesting. I, I, I know Jeff told you the story, so I, I, I called Mosher yesterday, m- late morning. I said, it's one of these, Je- Jeff and I call each other a lot. We share information sometimes, and we kind of laugh sometimes when we hear stuff. I said, I know you're going you're, you're gonna, to you're gonna throw something at me, but the Eagles are shopping our thing white side. And he laughed, of course, he laughed. Uh, I said, one of the teams told me. And I said, you know, I said to this team, which I didn't tell Jeff, but I could, you know, I could talk about it now. Uh, I said, hey, were you, did you offer anything? Were you interested? He goes, no, we were not interested. <laughs> they know that. They said they don't see him as a, you know, they didn't see him as a tight end. They know he's a decent special teams player, but that would not keep him on the team. And they, they because what you do is at this time of year, Mike, it's interesting. You, because everybody has to drop five players, you, you, you know, you're, you, you have what are called trade calls. You're, every team talks with, we, with each other this time of year. They always do. And you want to know who are these players before you cut them off? Any, you know, see if there's any interest. To, uh, it, would you have any interest in these players? And they say no, which is almost certain to be the case. They just they waive them if they're not vested. If they're vested, their their contract's terminated. So the Eagles, uh, you know, obviously were shopping them, and somehow, some way, the Seattle Seahawks uh, like the player. They they certainly don't need him as a receiver. The Seahawks are super deep at receiver, uh, tight end. I mean, I guess because he's. It was making the conversion. They've got a lot. Of, they've got a lot of tight ends. At best, he'd be their fourth tight end. I, I, I doubt that he makes their team. He's never say never. But they certainly don't need any receivers. In fact, you got Metcalf, Lockett, Freddie Sweeney, like D. Eskridge was their second rounder last year. You might remember Marquise Goodwin, the former Eagle great, uh, who was as you remember he opted out, so he never played for the Eagles. Penny Harder was with the Eagles years ago, so they really don't need him to be receiver. So you you would have to ask yourself, Mike. What what are the Seahawks? What were they thinking? Because the only team to to do this was the Seahawks, from what we understand. So I don't know. They obviously won them for some reason, but 
it's going to be hard for him to make the team. Right, and in return, the Eagles get a player in Ugo Amadi who has actually yeah. been on a field. He has played snaps on defense, but is also a pretty good special teams player and has some versatility. So you would think that the Eagles gave up a player in Ortega Whiteside that wasn't going to make their team for a player who has a good shot to make their team. Yeah, we, we are going to have some great stuff for you Thursday morning. We uh, we got a great scouting report from our sources on this, so we're going to release that Thursday morning on the show. But, yeah, look, you got a guy, I think you framed it right, you got a guy who's got a much better chance. Our take away side has much of a chance as you do to make the Eagles roster. He was never going to make it. Uh, he was a, in fact, if you graded their players 1 to 90, if you put them as a 90th player, you could figure out what that means. I would not have argued with it. It just never worked. I, I maybe you, you know, you're Eagles historian, Mike. Maybe you could remember. I cannot remember, other than Jaquan Jarrett, a, 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 a first or second round pick in the last, I don't know, 15 to 20 years that literally from day one didn't have it. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure your listeners could could figure it out. Yeah, and people love kind of yeah. people love kind of uh, trying to go through down memory lane of. of I can't. I, 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 it's funny, Mike. I'm at practice. I'm at another team's practice. I'm actually thinking about this thing because I know we're going to do the segment. I, I Jarrett was a, now here's the difference though. Jarrett, they were both second round picks. Uh, Jarrett was at I believe in 2011 out of Temple. Jared at least went someplace else and could play though. The Jets, right? Yeah. But exactly, he revived his career, stayed there for a little bit. But going back to the Eagles situation, he was he didn't do anything from day one. Remember he remember his deal. He was a, maybe the best tackling safety for the draft. But the Eagles learned a valuable lesson: you do not draft box safeties early. That was a mistake. Yeah, you're talking and about a he, second round pick, right? That that could right. that couldn't play. Yeah, yeah. terrible. Yeah, yeah, it's terrible. And and Arthur Eagle White said, "I'll say this. Uh, here's what I was wrong. I I, saw, I remember we Jeff and I did our show. We said at the very least." He's going to get on the field and help him uh, in the red zone because he's a good big test and catch guy. The analytics say that. He didn't do anything. He, I, I can't. I, I remember he stood there against the, the Lions maybe in his first or second season. He just stood there like around the 40 or 45 yard line and caught a ball. But I, I'm telling you, the guy did nothing. Special team, he was a very average special teams player, I was told, by the way. Just so you know, people are trying to blow him up as this great special teams player. I was told not true. Um, overrated by the media in that area. I mean, yeah, he could play. He's decent at it, but he's not great at it. And he, it just, it's, here's the thing, another thing. So many people around the league liked Ortega White, I believe it or not. There are, there are a lot of people that Jeff Mosher and I talked to. We're actually at the Combine together. We, we're going to tell some stories on Thursday's show, <laughs> which we're going to hold, but I'll just give you a little bit of a hint. You would be surprised at some of the comments we got, positive or negative, on Ortega White's side. So to sum it up, Mike, a total bust. They completely missed. Yeah. I wish him well. He was a good guy. A good guy, from what I heard, but a very bad miss. Uh, and one of the reasons why they've had to address the receiver position lately. Absolutely. My names I could come up with would be Matt McCoy and Quentin Caver were two terrible second round picks. There you go. Quentin Caver was a linebacker, right? And then the one Matt McCoy, because the late great Jim Johnson loves smaller linebackers. He also that's a good one. I would say he. I'd have to go by go back and see how many games he started. Not but many. I, I, right, but my point is with Arcega White said I can't rem- remember a time that a guy was drafted for a specific purpose other, other than Jaquan Jarrett and literally offered that did nothing. Zippo. I mean, yeah. it's just it's it's hard to believe. And he, the other story we reported this three years ago, the Eagles actually had a trade worked out. Uh, They're working with a trade with the Jets. If Miko Hardman was going to be there when the Eagles were going to pick, the Eagles had a trade worked out with the Jets, and unfortunately the Chiefs took him, and the, the Jets backed out. And I don't recall now, this is uh, four years ago, three, four years ago. I don't remember exactly what, you know, what did the Eagles look, was, was their board different? What if they taken Ortega Whiteside, even if they traded down? I can't answer that. Right. But they definitely were working on a deal to not take Ortega Whiteside there. But. The trade didn't work out. All right. Let's uh, get some intel on preseason game number one, some of the things that uh, you heard after, um, you know, we saw a successful first team. I mean, they went down the field and scored. They were up 14 to nothing. Uh, So what are some of the things that we heard, or you heard, I should say, uh, about preseason game number one? Yeah, I'll tell you what was, was interesting about this game, Mike is they just went right down and scored an offense. Uh, it, it, his coaches will tell you that they, they would love it because most teams only want to play their starters if they use them in all one or two series, and that was the Eagles' plan coming in. 
And right when they went down the field, the head coach did the right thing, pull everybody out, which he did, except Jurgens. You know, he, he played for uh, most of the, the first half. I think he might have even played in the second half. But nevertheless, uh, look, they went right down and scored. It wasn't perfect. I know people are killing Hurts for a couple things. I think it's a little bit too strong. Still six for six. Made the incredible throw to um, the Watkins, uh, where Watkins mirrored him. It was a great throw. Uh, the, the, my only issue is he had uh, on the first check down to, uh, to Sam. He, he, had, he had got it wide open. He saw him, but he just didn't throw it. But other than that, he was really good. Oh, look, six for six is great. And the line was great. Uh, the, the, I know the Jets didn't play all the starters on defense, but, hey, Sauce Gardner was out there. They executed well. Remember now, uh, Landon Dickerson did not play. We know Kelsey did not play. So Pettis started. On defense, Milton Williams started for Hargrave. Their defense also looked good. They, I think, uh, you know, if you're an Eagles fan, both sides of the football look really good for the terms of the starters when they were in the game. Uh, real quick, some quick Eagles news. Uh, Jimmy Moreland has been uh, released. So some of their cuts are starting to come down. they got to get down, what, to 85? Yes, yeah. Jimmy Moreland, we were told, had a slight ankle injury, and he just came back. He just came back to practice. It's too bad because um, he's a guy they really thought that would push for that, that fifth quarterback job. But right. uh, as we outlined, Josiah Scott's the one. He's the reason why he's not there anymore. Yeah, and, uh, you know, you take a look at some of the offensive intel from that game. You mentioned, you know, Hertz, Reed, uh, Reed Sinet was a guy who we had heard good things, but he really struggled in his opportunity to kind of, uh, you know, maybe uh, earn a spot on this team. Boy, that was, yeah. And look, I understand, you know, this is a game and it's different speed and you also could get hit where in practice you cannot get hit in any practice. The quarterback, that's why he wears a red jersey. And he, I, I you know, I give Sirianni credit for, for admitting that he was nervous because he, he looked like it. He, it was kind of surprising he looked as bad as he did. And then he settled down and did better. Mm-hmm. They have real hope for him as a third quarterback, Mike, whether he's on the practice squad or maybe it, or just if they keep three quarterbacks. Because remember now, Minshew's contract's up after the season, and they don't have a number two quarterback for next year, whether or not Hurts is the quarterback at all, you know, the starter at all. They just don't know who the, the number two would be. And this kid's got a big kid. He's got a good arm, and a, uh, he's done everything the coaches have asked. And I'm anxious to see how he looks this week. In practice, in the joint practice, and obviously in the game against the Browns. Uh, what about Huntley in the game he had? Because, you know, there's so <laughs> many injuries at that spot. Uh, did he do something that's saying, hey, we got so many injuries? Look at what he did. I couldn't believe it. I mean, I was like, 20 touches? <laughs> Where did this come from? Now, that look, he's, this is his third year with the team. They got a good look at him. Uh, Sanders now has a hamstring injury, which is that's really disappointing with all the soft tissue injuries he's had. You, you look at his situation, uh, and the Boston Scott with a pretty significant concussion. You know he, he's missed over two weeks. Hopefully he'll be better soon. That, that's why they signed the kid DeAndre Tour. He only played one snap on special teams, so yeah, uh, and game well with the hip. So yeah, he had to play a ton of snaps. And uh, you know Sanders looked good by the way before he, you know before he left the game, but now he's got a hamstring injury. Uh, so Huntley, they're getting a good look at him. Um, he it's still highly unlikely he makes a team. He he's got to be more than a special teams returner. You don't, know, as uh, GM told me on their on my tour here, he said it's hard to keep a guy that can only do one thing. In today's NFL, teams they don't keep a lot of. If you're a specialist, that's great, but you got to be doing more than one thing. Uh, it, it's just rare for a team just to keep a guy who do one thing. So, it's highly unlikely Huntley will make it. I, I don't see them keeping more than three running backs on the 53. Right. I could see him be on the practice squad, however. Uh, Adam Kaplan, football at four. Uh, wide receiver, you know, we, we still are uh, seeing if anybody separates air. Uh, Rager got the start for Smith in the game because he did not play, but Smith is back at practice, so that's a good sign. But Deion Kane, we heard a lot about uh, Britton Covey. Uh, he, you know, uh, banged his thumb up in that game. But Kane actually had the second most snaps in that game on Friday night. Yeah, in fact, if the Eagles are able to trade Jalen Rager or not, they just they don't want to trade him. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, that would open up for Deion Kane to possibly make it. You know, he's a guy that I know Nick Sirianni really likes. In fact, Sirianni was there when uh, Kane tore his ACL with the Colts. He, it's taken him a long time to get the knee right, but he, he's a guy's got a good frame. It's been a good story here to, to, to challenge it. it. He should be. I mean, based on the way he's practiced, he should be one of the guy, guys who's down to the 53. It should be going out on the wire whether he makes it or not. 
Uh, and then Goddard scored that touchdown, and you know the significance of that was a little bit more of who didn't catch that ball. I thought. <laughs> yeah, the funny thing about AJ Brown is because you know I'm sure you know all the stories from the B reporters are like, wow, Brown dominates these these number one in pass targets in training camp and all that, and he doesn't get a ball in the first series, which which means absolutely nothing. Who cares if he got if if he got a target in the first series? They only play one series, uh, but it, it the good thing is though. Goddard and I love the touchdown because he's you know he like bounced off the defender. The, the defender made a really weak attempt to tackle him. Uh, but Goddard has had a monster camp. He's had it to be. He's one of my breakout players. Also for fantasy, I love him. Uh, and it was good. I mean, look, it was a cover three beater. It was zone. Uh, they found him there, which is what happens against cover three. Uh, left middle, right middle. You should always have someone open down the seam there. And they did. It was a good throw. I mean, great protect. That's the other thing is. The protection on the first drive was really, really good. A couple of small breakdowns, but they caught it. Uh, they, they were able to adjust, and they did a good job. Yeah, the, the first-team offensive line picked up right where they left off, and Jurgen stepped right in and looked like he belonged. Yeah, he did a good job, man. He, he, as we noted on our show, he's ahead of schedule. Uh, he really is. Now, this is, this is the preseason, but it's still live contact. That, that's the important thing. Because Kelsey won't be ready to week one. He's going to get all the ones this week against the Browns. Uh, Cameron Thomas, the backup center. And that's pretty much it. Jack Anderson could do it as well. Tom took a lot of snaps in this past game. Uh, and Anderson, again, can do it. I'd say Milo looks really healthy, Mike. That's another thing. He looks great. And also, we should mention defensively, Brandon Graham looks fantastic. He, he showed that he's back. It's a, quite the story, and we hope it continues. Like that. Uh, speaking of defense, the defense dominated the Jets, and, and I thought that uh, that was really, um, you know, the, the Jets are a team. Uh, I think the quarterback's going to struggle. He ended up getting hurt. But uh, yeah. it was good to see that the Eagles defense, we've heard a lot about all these upgrades. Kaiser White had the interception. Uh, obviously, Jordan Davis, we were all looking forward. We saw a lot of multiple fronts, and N'Kobe Dean showed that he belonged as well. So I think the Eagles defense really was uh, a big story in that game. It was. They looked really good. Um, their, that side of the ball is the healthiest of the two sides of their ball, and it showed. I mean, they, they, they have a lot of depth, it's the most depth they've had since probably 2017. Uh, this is the best linebacker group they've had since 17. It's the best young group they've had in several years. And as we were saying on our show that dropped uh, earlier this week, you don't have if if you're an Eagles diehard or season ticket holder, you no longer have to be embarrassed with what they put out there. <laughs> linebacker, in fact, you should be pretty proud. They've got incredible amount of talent. Uh, Kobe Dean's obviously got late first, early record, second round talent. Uh, went in the third round, and uh, he was very physical in that game. Showed up, did a good job. Five combined tackles for solo. You mentioned the Kaiser White uh, pick. He's had an excellent camp. He's been more physical than people thought because he's a smaller guy. As you know, he went to your school. And, uh, look, they, they played three down. They played four down. They, they disguised a little bit. Uh, not much, but just a little bit. Uh, and they're going to disguise a ton this season. And this is stuff they were not doing last year because yeah. they didn't have the defense. They didn't have the, the right. They, they didn't have the personnel. No, they do now. And that's – I have not been bullish on the Eagles like this in years. In fact, that the year, Mike, in 2017 when I picked them to be 9-7 – if someone from the front office said to me he'd take that, that person didn't think they'd be that good, and they won the Super Bowl. So who the hell knows? <laughs> it's kind of funny. Uh, but this roster is really good. I, uh, I'm, it, uh, it's funny we'll you see. say that, Adam, because yesterday we were at Ocean Casino, and Pete Thompson walked up to the window and said, eh, I put 50 bucks on the Eagles to win the Super Bowl, to which Josh said, why would you do that? And I said, well, if he did that in 2017, you would have gave him the same reaction. Of course. And guess what? He would have walked out with 2500 bucks. And guess what? Their over-under is nine and a half. Right. Uh, plus 110 on, on, on under, which I don't see any way. In fact, uh, I, I would probably pick them to win the division. I most likely will do that when we turn our picks in. Uh, the under is minus 130. Uh, look, they were a nine-win team with an inferior roster. I, I, to this day, I'll never understand how the heck they had a, a record over 500. I know the schedule was great to close the season. Well, folks, the Eagles' schedule this year is really good if you just look at the way these teams are based on the rosters. Uh, the Inside the Birds podcast, check it out on wherever you listen to your podcast, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Jeff Mosher, and Adam Kaplan 
Uh, they've got the Inside the Birds podcast. You can get all their stuff over at InsideTheBirds.com. And football at 4 every day at 4 o'clock. Mosh is back tomorrow as the Eagles will head to Cleveland uh, Thursday, Friday. They will have those uh, uh, inner squad practices, and then they'll get ready for Sunday at 1 against the Browns. Adam Kaplan's back on Friday at 5 o'clock because Adam will be in Cleveland for those joint practices. So we'll get a live update from Cleveland when he returns for football at 5 on Friday. All right, Adam, we'll talk to you then. Sounds good, thanks. All right, Adam Kaplan. Uh, yeah, Adam will be back on Friday at 5 o'clock on Friday, a special football at 5 for you here on the Sports Bash on Friday's edition.